Hi, my name is Shanti Bogdanda, and I'm just going to say about my health and food due to some health things that's been occurring. Hi, my name is Miss Gabriela, and I'm the immigrant health specialist here. What pain have you been having? Well, my body has been very itchy, and some weird red patches have begun to develop on my skin. Also, I noticed some weird bumps under my skin, but they will not go away. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrews, and I'm the traditional healer. Have you been doing anything lately that could have triggered it? Could you be misguided spiritually or socially? I have not had as much schooling as Dr. Thompson, but patients who have received my form of treatment have recovered well, and I have all my techniques passed down for me from my ancestors. The pain you have been having could not have been caught from the dirt, but it could have been incurred by family history. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I don't tend the garden since my responsibilities as a mother would interfere with me tending a garden, but I did live with my sister back in Chad and she lives on a farm. There were a lot of bugs that flew around due to the dirty conditions. Is there a possibility that the living conditions could have somehow made me sick even though the visit was about a year ago and I'm just not feeling ill? Uh, did you notice any bug bites after you left your sister's house? Um, as a matter of fact, I did notice a bug bites after I left the house. Are you insinuating that I could have obtained some sort of sickness from a bug? You could not have obtained any sickness from a bug without, I can't tell you the truth without running any tests, but, um, yeah. Well, I come from a small two bedroom home with 15 relatives under one room in Anjumina Chad. My great grandfather had something called onchocerciasis, and so did one of my brothers, but unfortunately, he is not here today. Due to us being very poor, we can never find the money to pay for treatment for my great grandfather. So we ended up passing a few months later. He ended up surviving for about a year and two months after being diagnosed with the disease. A few months after his death, I fled Chad because we were under attack by the Sudanese government, and they were killing civilians. So now I'm here in the United States and we have been here for a while. Well, I'm very sorry for the loss of your brother and great grandfather. That information is very important to know if we are going to try and, try and diagnose you. Is there any other family history or information you would like to share with us? Anything at all, no matter how small, is important. Well, back in Chad, I took care of handling family responsibilities and household tasks such as my, taking care of my son and daughter. My husband has another wife other than me, so there, could there be a possibility that she gave Tandy, my husband, something and I could have obtained it from her? I'm not sure what is going on with me. Is there anything else you can tell me? Well, currently in Chad, there is a malnutrition that could, uh, that could be a cause of your pain. Not receiving enough food or nutrition can make you weak and ache. Well, I've been pretty good on getting the correct, correct nutrients for my body, so I don't think that that could be the reason for the pain that I can have. Okay, since you have not been malnutrition, then we can move on. Water contamination is also a big problem in Chad. Water there is very contaminated and not fit to drink. Water must be heated to kill most bacteria. Are you sure the water is clean before you drink it? Well, when I'm dehydrated, the cleanliness of the water is not really my number one. You really need to make sure the water is clean before you drink it because that can make you really sick. Another concern for you is that you can contract HIV or AIDS. HIV or AIDS is recorded to be very high in Chad and is cause for concern to me. Deaths from HIV or AIDS have been spiking since 2009. You need to be very careful who you sleep with and who sleeps with your husband. You told me before that your husband has another wife could either of them be affected? Yes, HIV could be a cause of what you're having, but judging by your symptoms, and from how, how you explained that there are a lot of bugs around you, there might be a slight chance you could have gotten onchocerciasis without knowing due to the fact that you wouldn't know from three to 15 months later. Well, how could you diagnose people with onchocerciasis? Traditionally, to be diagnosis of onchocerciasis required demonstration of microfilaria in a skin smear biopsy sample. This technique yields high specificity in experienced hands, but low sensitivity in early stages of the infection. The diagnosis may also be direct examination of surgical specimens obtained by surgeon of knowledge. Another way
way to diagnose you with onchocerciasis is to do spiritual rituals to determine if the disease has taken over the body and if it can be healed. Well, what are the health problems if I do have onchocerciasis? Because due to my low income, I don't think I'll have enough money to pay for treatments if the health problems are that Well, diagnosing you can be difficult if you had a light infection, which possibly can be the case for you since onchocerciasis is more common in people who have traveled but are not residents of affected areas. The cause though for onchocerciasis is a transfer of larvae of the parasite onchocerca vulvalis. By a female black fly when the fly gets a blood meal by a human, the larvae enter subcutaneous tissues and develop into male and female ones. Also, onchocerciasis Onchocerciasis can cause kidney failure, blindness, and even death if it goes untreated without a permanent fix. Well, my vision seems to be a little bit impaired lately. Maybe I do have onchocerciasis. Well, before we could treat you, is there anything from your culture that could affect you if we choose to give you Western medicine or um, traditional medicine? Because I understand cultural factors can affect health and healthcare, such as your language, communication styles, and belief on like health care disparities because they are often linked to environmental, social, and economic disadvantages. Well, in my culture, we normally use traditional medicine. Western medicine is not forbidden, but I just prefer not to have to use pharmaceuticals. The test came back, and it looks like you unfortunately do have onchocerciasis. Ivermectin may have a modest effect on infection rate, which selected intestinal helminths studied of doxycycline. <coughs> interrupts microfilarial embryogenesis, dramatically decreasing or eliminating microfilariae for at least 15 months after treatment. Moxidectin is an antiparasitic drug, drug that is currently being studied by for who uses in onchocerciasis. Moxidectin is closely related to ivermectin, but animal studies suggest it causes causes more sustained reduction in microfilarial levels. Along with the medication you can take, another treatment option is aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is the use of essential oils on different parts of the body. Now for onchocerciasis, the treatment with aromatherapy would be to take lavender oils and spread them on all parts of the body and extra by the eyes to kill off the disease. And if you choose not to do the aromatherapy, you can also do a form of meditation called Reiki. Reiki was taken from the Japanese in the early centuries. Well, actually, the spiritual image of psychiatry has impacted negatively on perception and treatment of people with mental health care problems in the regions. Patients with psychiatric problems are ostracized and subjected to cruel and inhumane and disregarding treatment. They got tortured, beaten, starved, and chained during exorcism. People did believe that mental health problems can be exercised and actually engage in services of charities. But the process of this treatment was too harsh for people to bear. Dr. Andrews, I understand that you believe a spiritual ritual will help the patient, but maybe this is not the way to go for this particular disease. I understand what you are saying, Dr. Thompson and Ms. Gabriel. What is another way us three can come together to treat Ashanti? The idea of aromatherapy is a good way to help heal Ashanti. I can try and prescribe her ivermectin and see how her healing process is during the time she is on the medication. We can monitor and watch her, monitor her and watch her, pro her progression. I think we should try a traditional healing technique um, called Reiki that is used worldwide and upon all cultures. It's worth a shot without pharmaceuticals. This might actually work. Let's give it a shot. Can you please close your eyes and relax? This is to heal the inside of the head. When doing a Reiki healing, if the patient is experiencing anxiety or depression, you will hold, you will keep the hands over the face for a longer period of time to make them more relaxed. If the patient is not calm, the treatment will not be most effective. This is to heal the front part of the head, the eyes, the face, and the nose. 
Traditional healers in many African countries will actually choke the patient to essentially squeeze the disease out of the patient. But in the United States, it is banned. So traditional healers in the U.S. had to come up with an alternative way of doing it. This is, if you put one hand on her, near her throat and one hand near her chest, it heals the lower throat and the lung area. And then, when traditional healers push on their stomach, it forces the <coughs> disease in the stomach to push out. I don't think this will work. Just wait and see. You might be surprised with what the treatment can accomplish. to run some tests, but your symptoms seem to be subsiding, but I'm still concerned about those red spots and bumps on your skin. We may still need to medicate for that. I agree. Even though I'm not a full fan of pharma the pharmaceutical approach, sometimes it is necessary for serious illnesses. As long as you keep a positive and open mind to the natural way of healing, even though it might take a little longer, but we'll have no side effects like pharmaceuticals. Well, Ashanti, we could try another approach. Dr. Andrews, do you still want to try the lavender essential oils? Yes, I would still like to attempt the lavender oil treatment. All right, but if this doesn't work, we need to do the medication. Do you agree with this, Dr. Andrews? I agree. I'm willing to try and keep my mind positive and open up with treatment, so I'll try and I'll admit, even though I was a little skeptical at first, but in the end, the patient is the one who benefit, benefited, so thank you, Dr. Andrews, for first. Thank you. Good luck to you, too.